I cannot believe that I am going into my third trimester of pregnancy this week. It seriously has flown by so quickly. And I feel like I get questions from you guys on Instagram all the time about different pregnancy related things, whether that comes to body image or supplements to be taking or what you should do to prevent heartburn, all these different things. Um, and so I'm going to share with you guys today my five biggest tips going through pregnancy of things that you want to do or remember in order to make this a season of life that feels really joyful and something that you can feel super grateful for and like you are enjoying the process and the journey rather than <laughs> dreading it the whole way through. Now, all of that being said, I think it really starts with your mindset. 150%. Going into pregnancy feeling like you are terrified of gaining weight or terrified that something bad is going to happen isn't going to serve anybody. And I will tell you the first time that um, we got pregnant after our pregnancy loss, like the amount of anxiety that I had was absolutely crippling. I felt so horrible the entire first trimester and I wish I could go back and completely change that because it didn't make it enjoyable for me. So reminding yourself that this is a season of life to be grateful for, to take it one day at a time and to be as present as possible is so important. The same goes for if you are somebody who is really fearing the weight gain or the uh, changing body or getting acquainted with this new body image of yours. This is a season of life. It is not something that is going to last forever. It is not something that is going to mean that your body is going to look this way for the rest of your life. Your body has to gain weight in order to go through pregnancy. You have to expand and grow. You're growing a new life within you. Your hips are going to separate. Your uterus is going to get very, very big. It's going to grow about 20 times the size. You are going to have more circulation. You are going to change in so many ways because you are growing a human being. And so it is normal and actually healthy. You are supposed to gain weight. And so remembering that this is all happening for a reason, this is happening so that you can bring new life into the world is a really great perspective and mindset shift so that you can see things a little bit differently and have more gratitude for the experience you're going through. So again, whether you are feeling anxious about something bad that's going to happen, or you are afraid of the pregnancy weight gain, or you are super frustrated that you're getting morning sickness, just remember that this is a season of life. And the end goal, the outcome, the thing that you want the most is waiting for you at the end of these nine and a half months. And so looking at it from that way, seeing the forest from the trees can be really helpful when you're feeling down or anxious or afraid or not so great in your body because it's not going to be this way forever. I promise you that. The next thing is to take methylated folate. Not all prenatal vitamins have methylated folate and 40% of us in the population have a genetic mutation called MTHFR, meaning we cannot properly methylate folate. And so the folic acid that is put into prenatal vitamins can't be used by our system. And we need that nutrient in order to do things like help with fetal development, prevent birth defects, have proper neural tube development. And so you really want to make sure that regardless of whether or not you know you have the genetic mutation, why not just take the form of folic acid that's already methylated for you? So if your body can't do the job, it's no big deal. You know you're taking the version that is going to be useful for everybody. Forget, again, regardless of whether or not you have the genetic mutation. So taking that methylated folate is going to be really important because it is needed for so many processes within the pregnancy. And most of us are not getting adequate amounts of vitamins, minerals, nutrients from our food these days because our soil is really depleted. A lot of people are eating a lot of packaged and processed food. The list goes on and on. The third thing I will tell you that I had to learn the hard way is making sure that you get enough 
rest, that you really focus on taking care of yourself during this time, that you focus on slowing down, that you focus on taking care of your physical body. When I was pregnant with Enzo, I struggled at the end really badly with high blood pressure and really bad edema to the point where I couldn't fit in any of my shoes. Um, and I know for a fact that it comes back to me and my stress and what I wasn't willing to put down at the time. And you have to remember that your body is going through a stressful process already, making another human being. And so the moments that you feel exhausted, burnout, tired, like you have too much on your plate, take that as a cue and a signal from your body to actually do the right thing and slow down. So if you need a nap, if you need more rest and you need to ask for help, do that. It's really important to do that. I think that I actually know that if I could go back in time and do things differently in my pregnancy with Enzo, I absolutely would have. And it probably would have prevented me from having a delivery that was early and a little bit traumatic for me where um, he wasn't ready to come out. I wasn't ready to give birth. Thank goodness we're both okay. But knowing that my stress was a contributing factor to that made me really want to do things differently in this pregnancy. And when we think about stress and we think about lack of sleep, those things can contribute to so many different pregnancy complications that none of us want to think about, whether that's the high blood pressure or it is things like heartburn or things like gestational diabetes or things like the list really does go on and on pregnancy migraines that's one i hear a lot from people like the symptoms that are pesky and annoying that we have we have to manage our stress manage our sleep and make sure we're caring for our bodies in a meaningful way in order to help from a holistic perspective prevent some of those things from happening if you are sleeping well and not stressing is that 100 percent going to mean that you don't get gestational diabetes no of course your diet plays a role in those things as well but is it going to be helpful absolutely yes so if you're thinking about like the fact like oh I, I get pregnancy migraines all the time try to hydrate try to take care of your body from a nutrition standpoint in terms of not eating sugary processed foods but then also try taking care of your stress and sleep I promise you that will probably make the biggest impact on those pesky pregnancy symptoms most of us are overrun overworked and not doing enough to care for our bodies when we are going through this season of life. So I highly, highly recommend that. The next thing is when you're thinking about actually having the baby, one of the things that I feel like I failed to think about enough was actually taking a proper time off maternity leave, time for myself to recoup, recover, bond with my two kids. Um, and I think that we don't give enough credit to the fact that this is a huge life change that we go through as women, as families. And we wanna make sure that we're really nurturing both that new person that's coming into our homes and our lives and our families, but also nurturing ourselves. And so thinking about preparing, planning, how can I have the food that I want to have made? Do I make freezer meals? So that way I'm getting nourishing, real whole food that, you know, I can pull out of the freezer drawer and pop in the oven when I need it before the baby comes. So that way when baby's here, things are easy and I'm not ordering things that are greasy, gross takeout or only eating bars that are stuffed in my pantry and not getting real nourishment because the reality is your body needs that real nourishment more than ever after you have a baby when you're sleep deprived when your body is recovering from blood loss and all these different things so really prep and plan before you go in and have the baby how long do you actually want to take off this is something so important to think about which i didn't think about both of the times so i was just like okay well i'm back to answering emails and messages and all of these things right away which felt super overwhelming and not good in my body my cortisol was already high enough and i wasn't taking enough time to relax to refresh myself and to bring my body back to a state of feeling whole again 
And so think about how much time you want to take. Is that four weeks? Is that eight weeks? Is that 12 weeks? What does that look like for you where you are really in this cocoon and nest of your home, of your family, and not as available to the outside world as you once were because you're taking that time to recover, which is a really, really necessary piece of all of this. So prepping and planning and thinking ahead in terms of what you want all of that to look like is really important. And that's something that I've really been doing in the last two or three weeks as I move into the third trimester, thinking about how I want to have my out of office on, how much less time I want to spend on social media, maybe pre-planning content that I'm going to put up there, having an out of office on for a certain number of weeks, making sure that I don't have clients during that time. All of those things are coming into my mind. And then not being afraid to ask for help would be kind of the third piece of that tip. So for some people that's easier than it is for others. I'm really blessed in the sense that my whole entire family, my in-laws and my parents all live here in Vegas. And so if I wanna send my kids over to my mom's, I can do that. If I wanna send my kids over to my in-laws for a couple hours, I can do that. We also have a nanny during the week that can help us. And so we're really blessed in that way. If you have less family or less friends, you may wanna think ahead even more in terms of, okay, I know I wanna have one day a week where I have some help. Can I ask my neighbor? Can I ask my friends? Can I ask my partner, my husband, whoever it is, to help me so that I can properly take a shower, try to clean up the house, maybe take a nap, whatever it is that you wanna do, but having that all pre-planned in your head so that way you're not feeling that guilt and shame and all of those uncomfortable feelings that are so unnecessary and should not be had, but that we have when we're not, quote unquote, meeting our own expectations. Once we get into ourselves into the situation of motherhood where the baby's already here, we haven't planned to ask for help, and then we feel like we're failing ourselves because we didn't actually ask for the help that we needed. So I think that that piece is really, really important, making sure that you know that you're going to ask for help and that it's okay to ask for help so you don't feel like a failure on the back end. You're absolutely allowed to ask for help. You should ask for help. Ha bringing a baby into the world is not an easy thing. And then the last tip that I'm going to give you in terms of having a healthy pregnancy, having consistent good energy levels, feeling good in your body, feeling like you haven't gained 80 pounds over the course of your pregnancy is once you get out of that phase where you feel like you're gonna throw up every 32 seconds, because I will tell you this pregnancy for me was absolutely the worst with all of that, possibly because it was twins at the beginning and I had way more HCG in my system, possibly because it's a girl, um, but the amount of nausea that I experienced in this pregnancy compared to being pregnant with the boys was way different. And so once you're out of that phase, because I think that it's really important to give yourself grace during that time, and if you can only eat crackers when you're feeling nauseous, eat the damn crackers and give yourself a break. But once you're out of that phase, remembering protein, fat, and fiber when it comes to your plate. Thinking about your blood sugar stability and making sure that you are eating every three to four hours. I like to think about smaller, more consistent meals. The bigger my belly gets, the more um, compacted all of those internal organs get because when we eat those really big meals, like two really big meals a day, it's going to cause more things like heartburn, indigestion, even nausea later down the road in pregnancy. So if you can think about those blood sugar stabilizing kind of mini meals where you're eating again every three hours or so, you're going to feel the best in your body. You're going to not feel like you have something coming up <laughs> this end every few hours because you've eaten a meal that's too big. And you're going to feel like you have energy to get through the whole entire day. I will say after going through, again, three pregnancies, this is the best that I felt because this is also the most informed I've ever been about nutrition and how to honor my body in a different way during pregnancy. And what that protein, fat, and fiber is gonna do is not only nourish you and your blood sugar, but it's gonna be the best way to nourish the growth and development of the baby, ensuring that they get everything that they need and they're not 
leaching certain vitamins and nutrients from your bones and things like that. Rather, they are getting all the nutrients they need from your blood supply from the placenta because you're nourishing your body in the most effective and healthy way. And when we think about the biggest complaint I hear on Instagram is, I don't want to gain the pregnancy weight. I don't want to gain the pregnancy weight. Okay, we all have to gain the weight. Like I said at the very beginning, that's part of the deal. But if you don't want to gain too much pregnancy weight where it feels so overwhelming after birth to have to be able to lose it, stabilizing your blood sugar in a way that is really wholesome. You're eating real whole foods. So the examples I like to give, like in the morning for breakfast, I will have a smoothie with some protein powder and some fruit, some greens, some almond milk, and maybe a couple tablespoons of nut butter. So that way, again, protein, fat, and fiber. Then a couple hours later, maybe I have some scrambled egg whites and avocado and a few slices of potato. A few hours after that, I will have a big salad with some grilled shrimp and an olive oil dressing for a nice healthy fat, lots of greens and vegetables on that salad for some good healthy fiber. And then at dinner, maybe I have either a piece of grass-fed meat or a nice piece of fish like salmon or a white fish like Branzino with some beans and some tomatoes and some broccoli as a vegetable. So throughout my day, I'm really not touching processed food. I'm really not touching sugar. I'm really not touching junk. And I'm filling and fueling my body with real whole food every few hours to keep me feeling full, focused, and nice and mentally clear. So I hope that this video was helpful and crossed the spectrum. It's really all of the things that I've learned that I have to remind myself of all the time and that I'm saying to myself as much as I'm saying them to you guys as you move through your pregnancy. So if you found this video helpful, subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.